37, Ezekiel chapter 37, Ezekiel chapter 37, we're going to start at verse 1. You know, I was thinking about over the last couple of days, you know, um, I've been talking about, which I'm, which I'm moving on from, but um, how, how we can represent God even when things aren't good. How we can still show what it means to live by faith when we're facing difficulties, right? But, you know, that's not the only way people ought to know that we belong to the Lord. Amen. Just because we're able to endure hard things. Mm -hmm. Just because we're able to not give up or not turn back to who we used to be when times get tough. That's not the only way people ought to know we're children of God. You know, sometimes it's all, it ought to be because we're blessed, too. That's right. See, we can't be scared to be blessed, too. Amen. Amen. See, see, I don't want people to just know I'm God because I, I know how to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I know how to praise him in the midst of my circumstances. I want those people to know I'm a child of God because I'm blessed beyond measure. Because God is moving in my life in a way that I can't explain other than it's God. I want people to know I belong to God because I'm prosperous beyond my wildest dreams. And so sometimes, you know, we, we have to remember the power that we have in our words. Mm -hmm. Amen. The power that we have in our confession. Right? Amen. Right? The Bible says, so a man thinks in his heart, so is that man. Amen. Right? So if we believe what God says over what we see, mm -hmm. right, then we should be able to find joy in any circumstance. Whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's okay to just be blessed. Amen. 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 It's okay to be blessed. Yeah. Sometimes it's okay to speak life over your situation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay to not say what you see, but say what God said. Amen. Even listen, listen, if you if you if you're doing the best you can, but you still don't can't seem to find enough money. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. So you ought to speak back to your situation. So your ends will find a way to meet, even if you can't make a meet by the supernatural power of God, activated by our faith in his word. Right? So I don't want to get so caught up in being able to go through hard times that I don't know how to enjoy good times. Come on, Right? Sure. Yeah. Hmm. right? Yes, yes. I know God's a healer because I've been hurt, but I don't want to stay hurt. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to speak life. That's right. That's right. Yes. You got to speak life to whatever area of your life is broken, whatever area of your life that you seem to not be able to get a grip on. You got to speak the word of God over that area. Don't rehearse to God what the problem is. He knows. You got to show God that you know what he said about that situation. Amen. And you believe in that more than you believe in what you see. That's right. And that's Amen. how you make it change. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, uh, uh, the people of God had been cut off from God, right, because of their engagement in sin. And moreover, their rebellion. And the rebellion I want to bring up this morning is a big part of this because, listen, it's one thing to fall off track. It's another thing to stay off track. That's right. That's right. Right? And rebellion is a bad thing because rebellion is what makes people refuse to repent. Mm -hmm. Rebellion is what makes people say, I ain't wrong, I'm not wrong, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I never met a person who was right about everything. So if you think you're right about everything, you're wrong. That's right. If you think your way of looking at it is the only way it can be seen, you're wrong. So the people had gotten engaged in sin, right, which we know is going to happen from time to time. That's not a past, but it's a fact. But the rebellion or the refusal to turn away from sin and turn back to God forced God to take his hands off them. So he lifted his hand of protection off them. He lifted his blessing off them. And if you don't think God got you, you better not even imagine what your life would be like without him. Mm -hmm. If you don't think God with you even in this, you can't even imagine what your life would be like without him. Amen. 
And so the people had now separated themselves because of their refusal to turn away from their sin from God. God's cut them off. And now he has caused them to be conquered by their enemies. So they're captive once again. And, and I found some, some, some joy in that concept, not the joy, the fact that they were conquered, but I found joy in the fact of knowing that sometimes there's some things in my life that think that they have the upper hand on me or some situation in my life that think they can come and overwhelm me, but it really ain't the power of the situation or the person or the thing. And sometimes they're just caught up in, in my relationship with my father. And sometimes you just got to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the disrespect. I'm sorry for the discontent. I'm sorry for not doing it your way. I'm sorry for not submitting my will to yours, right? Sometimes you go through some stuff just as a side note to what you got going on with your father. Because God is going to get your attention one way or the other. And we give the devil credit for stuff he ain't even did. We make him stronger than he ever was. Because we give him credit for some of the hard times we're going through when it's really you, 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 you being punished by your father. Right? So now they're captive once again, conquered by their enemies. I, I asked God one day, one day recently, I was like, seriously, why do I keep going through this thing with my stuff? Like, what is the, what is the deal? Serious, just downstairs by myself one day, it's like, what's the, what's the deal? And the Lord said to me, true story, the Lord said to me, don't get so comfortable thinking you're healed. As if you don't need me to heal you. Ooh. All right now. Wow. I said, Dang. Wow. Hmm. And he started showing me. True story. Right there in my kitchen. He started showing me. As soon as I thought I was healed, I didn't pray like I was, like I was praying. Hmm. I didn't call out to him like I was calling out to him. Hmm. I wasn't quoting that scripture. I wasn't confessing his word like I was when I was waiting to be healed. Hmm. Got to take that on the chin. Amen. So don't take your healing for granted. That's right. Don't get healed and get away from me mm -hmm. like you don't need me. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some things are just about you and God. Yeah. I'm trying to build up to something before I get you into this. Sometimes some things just about you and God. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, we quick, we quick to run away from God when we think we got it all under control. The Lord told me, don't think you don't need me to heal you. And so now the people of God are cut off from God. And now they're captive by their enemies. But God in his infinite mercy tells Ezekiel, I want you to go and preach to the people. I want you to tell them, thus said the Lord. And then God says, and I'll show you on a couple of occasions, God says not once but twice. It's not your responsibility what they do with the word. Come on, Bishop. It's not your responsibility. Whether they hear or don't hear is not up to you. You just go tell them what I said. Because here's the thing. God doesn't want to be separated from you. Amen. He doesn't want to be separated from me. He doesn't want days and days and days go by without hearing my voice. He doesn't want days and days and days go by without me opening up my heart. Without me shedding a tear or two. Without me just being honest with him. He doesn't want that. So he said, it's, it's not your responsibility, right? God reminded me again, the success of a ministry is not measured by the number of people that join or the number of people that come week in and week out. The success of a ministry is judged by the number of people who change. Amen. Amen. Period. Because you can have a church for 5,000 devils. And think you got a successful ministry. Mm. Mm. Right? It's how people change. Amen. So God, and it's very important that I say this, and I'm going to read it, but I want to say it first. So God gives Ezekiel a vision. This is not a literal thing that happened. It was a vision. I'm going to show it to you in, in, in the first couple of verses. He shows him how he can restore the people of God. Right? And I believe that God can not only restore us to him, I believe he can restore everything in our life. Mm 
Amen. Broken relationships, broken hearts, broken homes, bad health, bad credit, finances. I believe God can restore anything if we follow a simple process. Because I got to tell you something. Most of the time, we want God to bless us like a hit from the lotto. <laughs> right? Right? That's how we, that's how we see it, whether we, whether we say it or not. Most of the time, when we want God to bless us, we, you know, we, we all think to ourselves, whether we admit it or not, if I just hit the lotto, it'll change my life. Most people who hit the lotto, life can change for the worse, but that's another story. But most of us think if we if just, just one big lick. When reality is, that's not how God works at all. God works in the process. Why, Bishop? I'm not saying God can't do that, because at times he does do that. But more often than not, he won't do that. Why won't he do it, Bishop? Because God works in the process. Why would he work in the process, Bishop? Because it's called developing faith. All right. If God blessed you in one big lotto hit, then you'd be turning right back away from it. Uh-oh. You forget what it's like to be hurting and needed to be healed. Mm. You forget what it's like to trust him. That's why he told the Israelites, look, I'm going to feed you day by day, but don't pack none of it up. Don't save none of it. Don't store none of it. Because I want you to trust me tomorrow to feed you tomorrow. And I want you to trust me Tuesday to feed you Tuesday. But if they had stacked up the food, guess what? They wouldn't have had to believe God to feed them tomorrow. That's right. That's right. And those who packed it up, what happened to it? Turn to madness. Right? So we forget sometimes God wants to be in fellowship with us all the time. He wants to be in love with us all the time. He wants to engage with us all the time. Let's start reading. Verse 1. So the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. God gave him a vision. It was full of bones. This valley was full of bones. And he led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. Right? So the bones represent the people. The dryness represents the separation from God. Yes, yes. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel smarter than most. He said, can these bones live? Oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. In other words, I want to say the wrong thing. Sometimes, some of us talk too much. Amen. I'm going to look at the tent on the window <laughs> in the back of the room. Sometimes, some of us talk too much, especially if we're not saying what lines up with the word of God. Amen. Think about what you confess over your life. Oh, I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> I remember that was my favorite song at one point in my life. I used to cut the grass and play it, have my head, ear, air bar, earbud, whatever in my ear, whatever you call it. And my wife said, I was singing that song so loud. I made the next door neighbors sell their house. She said, you are the reason those people sold their house. Because you out there howling about you being overwhelmed. I'm not going to give it to your sample today. Don't worry about it. But you got to be careful what you speak on yourself. It's always hard for me. I'm always alone. I'm always broke. Things won't ever work out for me. Everybody's against me. What do you expect if that's what you say? Mm -hmm. I was in seminary. And I, when I got my head around this concept, I was in seminary, Bible college. And it was a guy I was picking up and taking back and forth to class because his car wasn't working. And he was so negative. And I said, look, dude, you can't, you can't keep riding my car if you're going to keep talking like that. He's like, wow, what's the problem? I said, because you bring this on yourself, and I don't want you to bring it on me. He said, you believe that? I said, you don't? I said, you cannot ride with me anymore. I can't pick you up anymore. So then the Lord said to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. Uh-oh. 
I'm, I, I'm, I, I want to read the 14. I'm probably not going to get there. But the meat and potatoes is, is for me in verse 4 and 5. Then he said, first he said, can these bones live again? Ezekiel said, hey, hey, Lord, only you know that. They, they probably could, they might can, but I don't know. But I, I'd rather just not say nothing. Sometimes it's okay just. You ain't saying nothing to help yourself. Don't say nothing to hurt yourself. Amen. Amen. And if you ain't got nothing good to say about me, please just don't add to my problem. Amen. It's okay to be quiet. We know how you sound. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Remember, he's talking to a people that are cut off. Mm -hmm. He's talking to a people who don't have the blessing of God on them, the protection of God on them, a people that are disconnected from God. And, and, and symbolically, he's saying to these people, hear the word of the Lord. Look, you don't got to hear what I think. Nobody cares about my opinion. Nobody wants to know how I feel. What is going to change your life is the word of God. Amen. He said, prophesy to the bones. Tell them, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Mm -hmm. That's hope. Mm -hmm. That's hope. Because sometimes some things seem hopeless. Sometimes some things seem like there's no answer to it, and it'll never change. But with the word of God, there's always hope. Amen. Always. Amen. And so God goes on to say how he's not only going to make the bones connect to each other to create a skeleton of a man, but then he's going to add tendons and muscles and ligaments to them. He's going to put skin on them, and then they will take form again. But they don't have life. But God then says he will also breathe on them, and then they will live again. In other words, God is going to restore them. Amen. See, if you was what I am, that's the reason to get excited. Amen. Amen. Yes. Right? God is going to restore them. That's what God does. That's why God sent Jesus. Another story. But that's what God does. But there's a process to it. There's a process to it. He said, the, if, if you read on, I'm not going to read on. But read on. It ain't okay. It'll take but a few minutes. Read on. Read on. Pretend like it's TikTok. <laughs> you don't read on TikTok. You did that video, right? Instagram. Uh, Twitter. That's what you read on Twitter. Just like it's Twitter. It don't take a few minutes to read the verse 14. Right? But here's, here's how the process went. Right? The bones had to connect to each other. One bone to the next bone to the next bone to the next bone to the next bone. Each bone to the right bone to create a skeleton. Then there had to be muscles and tendons and ligaments that had to be assigned to the bones. And then skin over the bones. And then breath into the body. Mm. Process because that's how your faith is developed. Mm. Wow. Come on. That's how your faith is developed. So when God gives you just a little something, then you want a little something more. Mm. When God gives you a little something more, then you want a little something more. And the more He gives you, the more you believe you can get. Mm. The more He starts to change your life and say to you and show you you are not who people thought you were, but you are who He created you to be, the more you start wanting to become more and more like that person. Amen. Amen. Right? The easier it becomes to resist reverting back to the old you. Yes. That means you're not going to be challenged in doing it, but it's easier to resist it. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you want to be more of who God called you to be. More of who God created you to be. But this is all about restoration. Right? It's not about Ezekiel and the bones. It's about God telling the prophet, go tell the people that they don't have to stay disconnected from me. I don't want that. I want to be close to them. I can restore them. And sometimes we get disconnected from God, not even because we just want to be engaged in sin. It's sometimes it's because we feel like God let us down. Let's just be honest. No, no, no you're not going to be honest. <laughs> sometimes we feel like God let us down. I was praying about a situation, and it didn't get better. It got worse. God let me down. I was believing God for something, and it didn't happen. God let me down. Right? 
So sometimes we turn away from God because we feel like, well, you couldn't have been there. Right? Because we forget that God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. We forget that he already has a plan for us. Amen. Some things you want God to do, he purposely isn't going to do because by not doing those things, it's going to position you in a place to get something better. Because mm -hmm. your life has already been mapped out. Don't be anxious. Just relax. Just relax. God's got it. Right? So sometimes we turn away from God because we feel like, but, but why didn't you do it? Because he's God and we're not. Sometimes the worst time in your life is the best time in your life. Amen. Don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. And we'd rather not endure a lot of those times but it's the truth. But we got to participate in the process. Let me show you how it works. Four things I believe that have to happen for restoration. And here's what I'm saying. I, I'm not just talking about you and God, although I'm talking about you and God, right? I, I, I confess daily, almost daily, I ask God to forgive me. If anything I've said, done, thought, or felt that wasn't pleasing in the sight, I've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. Forgive me if anything I've said, done, thought, or felt that separated me or kept me from you. Because I'm just a man. I'm just a human being. Mm -hmm. and sometimes I might say something that contradicts God's will. Sometimes I might do something or think something that, that is not in line with what God wants in my life. So I don't want to take it for granted that I'm so saved, that I'm so righteous, that everything I do is okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So in, in, in an effort to be humble, I say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for yesterday. Whatever I said yesterday that didn't line up. Whatever I said yesterday that made you take a, ste a step back from me, forgive me for that because I don't want to be separated from But one, you gotta repent. Yes. You gotta repent. Amen. Right? Amen. The problem with 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 the, with, with the children of God here is not only did they engage in sin, they refused to turn away from it. Mm -hmm. God told Ezekiel, whether they hear or don't hear, tell them what I said. Which means God knows these people are stubborn. <laughs> These people are thick. Not in a good way. <laughs> Hard-hearted. It's their life. They're going to live it the way they want. <laughs> you got to repent. You got to turn away from the things that contradict the word of God. It's okay to be the one to say, I'm wrong. Amen. But you don't know what they did to me, nor do I care. <laughs> that's a hard thing. That's a hard concept for people. And that's a hard conversation for people to have. Well, I, I deserve to feel a certain way about a person. Do you really? Do you really? That's a hard conversation to have. Every time I have it with somebody, it's difficult. It never gets easy. Mm -hmm. Right? Because when you feel like you have the right Which means you feel like you're justified mm -hmm. because of something someone did to you as if you are not going to do something to somebody else. Mm -hmm. As if they are not going to one day be justified. But we serve a God who's gracious and merciful and forgiving. And the Bible says, if you don't forgive me and their sins, mm -hmm. what's it say? Your father in heaven won't forgive your sins. I didn't make it up. That's what the Bible says. If you don't forgive people when they sin against you, God won't forgive you because God forgives you when you sin against him. So the nerve of you to exceed, accept, yeah, I've been saying this for you, accept his grace and not give it. But you don't know what they did to me. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Amen. I don't know what you did to God either, but he ain't, he ain't sharing that with me. Amen. But yeah, he still forgive you. You don't know how I sinned against God, but he still forgives me. So what could somebody have done that makes me feel like I have the right? I'm just telling you what happened. You can hold it against them, but then it's going to be held against you. I'm right, playing. Right. That's what the word said. So go on and get stuffed up. 
like Thanksgiving turkey with pride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talking about why you act like this and why you don't talk to this person and why you should feel that way. And just know, sometimes that's why your prayers aren't getting through. Amen. You don't cut your own, cut your nose off, how they say, to spite your face. Amen. I got something against this person in my heart, but I'm going to turn that same heart and pray to God to do something for me. Don't, don't write like that. Don't write like that. You got to repent, number one. Number two, you got to speak life. Mm -hmm. Jesus said over and over again, the words I speak are not my own. They are the Father's words. That's why he could stand by what he said, because he only said what God said. And that's how you are able to stand by what you say when you say what the word says. And that's how you change your circumstances. Because by, by faith you believe it's already happened according to the word. And listen, you got to work the word. Amen. It's okay to work it. Amen. It's okay to work it. Confess 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 it. Daniel prayed three times a day. Got caught. Why he prayed three times a day? I don't know. I ain't that deep in it. Today I'm not. But at the end of the day, look, if a farmer planted a seed and never went back to check on it, mm -hmm. how successful would he be in growing? Amen. Right? Would that work farmer folks? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? Don't you have to go and tend to it? Yes, indeed. Keep the, the, the birds and the animals from eating it away? Yep. Stealing it? Mm -hmm. Got to water it? got to make sure you pull the weeds from it. Right? Just like if you revive somebody, CPR. Right? You don't see somebody out and look at them and they pop up. No. If you assess the situation, I might say this wrong, so for y'all who got active CPR, don't, don't jump on me. I don't know if mine's still active or not. I've, I've been changed. I've been blessed. Right? But when somebody needs to be revived, you first assess the situation, right? You listen to hear their breathing, feel the breath, right? Right? I'm just, I'm just, but there's a process. Yeah. You tilt your head, open your mouth, do chest compression. Now they say don't breathe in the mouth, but you know you just have to breathe in the mouth too. Chest compression, breathe in the mouth. And then when the person starts coming through and they begin to be revived, you turn them sideways, right? So that they in their mouth, they don't choke, right? And then you tilt them up, right? And then you go, but there's a process. Amen. Right? So there's a process for you too. You got a relationship in your life that has been strained for a long time. Look, God ain't gonna give you a big lotto hit on that relationship. Mm -hmm. You got money that ain't working. Trust me, I've been there. If it ain't matching, if it ain't me, if you got anything you believe in God for and it ain't happened, you gotta work the word. Amen. Don't just say it one time and leave it out and go on back out there. No, you gotta tend to it. Mm -hmm. You gotta be all over that situation. Every time you think of it, you gotta be speaking it. Amen. You gotta be speaking it, speaking it, speaking life, speaking life, speaking life Amen. to your situation. Work that word. So you gotta repent. You got to speak life, but that life you speak has to be the word of God, though. Amen. It has to be the word of God. Remember, mm -hmm. this ain't gonna never work. It's not the word of God. Amen. This always happening. It's not the word of God. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I should just settle and be thankful for this. That is not the word of God. Amen. Bible's eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The good things that God has for those who love him. God never said you had to settle for less. Amen. Three, you got to watch what you say. Amen. Is that the same thing as speaking right? No. Watch what you say. Means being diligent in what you say so that you can look for it to come to pass. Amen. If you're looking for what you say to come to pass, then you start acting like what you say is coming to pass, and you start changing before it ever happens. That's what walking by faith, that's what living by faith looks like. It looks like believing it's done before it's done. Well, if it's done, how is that going to impact you? It should impact you like that right now. Right? I'm watching what I say. In other words, I want to see the very thing that I'm saying happen in my life. And a lot of times, that's exactly what's happening. We are seeing what's happening in our life, what we're saying. It's just what we're saying doesn't line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So if this sort of thing don't never work for you, then you got to go back and check your inventory. What have you been doing regarding this? 
But every time I turn around, that's all you say is it ain't going to work. What well, then how can you expect it to work? Amen. You're working against yourself. Mm -hmm. The angel told Daniel, man, you know I had to wrestle with the devil to get down here? Mm -hmm. When you pray, as soon as you decided to pray to God, God sent the answer. But you know why you didn't get it in the big lotto hit? Because the devil was trying to stop me. Amen. And I got to wrestle with the devil to get back. So now imagine you pray today, contradict your prayer tomorrow. What in the world is happening in the spirit realm? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying according to the word. What's happening in the spirit realm? Mm -hmm. If you by faith believe that what you pray for, especially if you pray in the word of God, is coming to pass, it's coming to pass. Mm -hmm. But the devil ain't going to make it easy. All right. And while you're waiting on the process, you got to be working the word of God. You can't contradict it because it don't happen tomorrow. It may not happen tomorrow. What did I tell you a week ago, two years ago? How long did it take you to get in the mess? <laughs> Every blessing ain't going to be in the microwave. Sometimes they oven blessings. All right. They oven blessings. You got to wait. <laughs> you got to wait. <laughs> right? So repent. Speak the word. Speak life, which is the word. Watch what you say. And then you got to pray, right? You got to pray, which means you have to be in constant communication with God regarding your situation. Amen. Not because you don't believe it, but because you do believe it. Amen. What did Jacob tell God? What did Jacob tell the angel? He said, you might as well, you might as well pack a lunch. Because we're going at this all night. Mm -hmm. You, we going at this all night. Mm -hmm. I gotta get all this stuff from around me and get back to God. But I'm telling you, when I when 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 when, when I connect with you, I ain't letting you go. Mm -hmm. That's like getting caught up in worship. Yeah. That's like getting having a moment where you feel the presence of God and you don't ever want it to end. Mm -hmm. Jacob said, "Look, I know how to get you, and I'm going to. Mm -hmm. But when I do, I'm not letting you go until you bless me." See, you got to be in constant communication. Hey, remember what you said. Remember what you said. You said. This is getting tough for me. I can't figure it out. But you said I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. You said I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. You said I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Right, but you got to work that thing. You got to you gotta constantly be in communication with God. God told Ezekiel, don't worry about, not, not in this chapter, but earlier, he said, look, don't worry about how they look at you. Don't worry about what they say to you. Because they're going to try to intimidate you. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about that. I, I'm with you. As soon as you decide to grab a hold to the word, man, it seems like all hell starts breaking loose. Amen. You're like, I believe it. Bishop, I got it. I'm, I'm, my faith is jarred up. I'm wired up. God's going to do it. And then the bottom falls out. You're like, what the? As soon as I decided to believe God, it didn't work. It does work. Amen. It's a process. The devil's trying to make you think that ain't going to work for you. He's just talking. That's his job to do that. No, it's not my job. It's my calling. It's the reason I breathe every day. Amen. Right? But it is going to work. But remember, you got to stay connected to God. You got to speak life to it. So that no matter how it looks, you still act like it's going to look. Amen. Not how it looks. Like it's going to look. Mm -hmm. That's how you transition. Yeah. That's how you transition from who you are now to who God called you to be. That's how you start walking out of and walking into Amen. what is really your destiny. Right? That's how you do it. Amen. God is a restorer. Yes, yes he is. I'm going to end with this. You and I have got to be intentional with our words. We have a thing we say, I got it from my boss. I love it because I like it when it's, when it's appropriate. We, 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 we refer to some people as many words. M-A-N-Y, words. 
That's typically a person who talks too much. We call them many words. Like it don't it don't take all that. Just get from A to B. You ain't got to take us all the way around. Just we don't want to hear all that. Some people have to tell them that you have a visitor. Don't worry about me. Just answer what they ask. Don't overdo it. Nobody's impressed. Right? Because I'd rather be effective with what I'm saying than be impressive by how much of it I say. Oh, right now. Jesus told Peter, hey, these people who pray in the synagogue, them long drawn out prayers. And I can say that because we've been taught better than that in here. <laughs> I wish to God, anybody in this church, take up an offering and start praying for the sick and shut in. My head going to pop right off my neck, fly through the roof and come back down. Jesus told the disciples, he said, them people with them long robes, I got a closet full of long robes. Them people with them long robes, praying up long, drawing out prayers, trying to impress me, them prayers don't have no validity to them. I don't even hear them. They ain't got no power. They just trying to impress people. Just speak from your heart when you talk to God. Look, don't, don't be going, well, Lord, you know, this really started with my, with my daddy. Look, nobody want to hear all that. God knows what your trouble is. I'm being honest with you. You know, because we want to justify first before we, before we pray. We want to justify our, our, our behavior. Well, Lord, you know. Look, it ain't your fault. You inherited it. Naturally. That's what Adam did. When God said, hey, 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 bro. What's, what's this? How come I don't feel you? Mm. How come? Uh, what happened? Why are you not connected to me like you used to be? Mm. What, what did you do? Adam said, man, you know, with that, with that girl you gave me, man. Mm. So it's really kind of your fault, because you gave it to me. That's what Adam said. Amen. He says, it's her fault. <laughs> and we've been blaming other people ever since. Amen. Well, I only act like I act because they did it to me first. That is pathetic for a believer to walk around with something in their heart against somebody else and feel justified to keep it in their heart because you got your feelings hurt. My Lord. Yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty elementary, all right. That's pretty, that's, you know. Still on baby food, not solid food. So I gotta chew it up for you so you don't choke. Gotta be intentional with your words. Amen. Our words have to become God's word. Amen. We have to say what God said. Amen. I ain't gonna put you on the spot. But I mean, ask yourself, through the course of a day, how many times do you confess something that's in the Bible Come on now. over your own life mm -hmm. throughout the course of a day? Just ask yourself. Just, just answer, answer to yourself. Mm -hmm. We got three scriptures we change every week and, and we put on the website. Those are our scriptures Amen. that we stand on as a minister. Amen. That book you get from other folk when you join the church, that, that scripture book. I, I do that every day, the whole book. Amen. You should be the pastor. They ain't got nothing to do with it. I do it because I got to live every day. Amen. I do it because I got to live every day. I got to trust God every day. I, I, I quote the whole book every day. But to make it easy, we just we go in the same order in the book. We just pull out the next three scriptures. Everybody in this church ought to be saying that. If, you, if, the, if nothing else, you ought to be confessing those three scriptures over Amen. your life. And over this ministry, and over the people in this church, and if everybody in here was doing that every week, yeah. imagine the change that would happen. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna challenge you right now. Yes, you can yes. pull it up on your phone. Yes, yes. You can go to www.youtube.faithfulfellowshipministries.com. Mm -hmm. Click them little lines, yeah. and it says this week's scripture. 
Go to these three scriptures. Read them three scriptures. Every day. And you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you. What if all of us were doing the same three every day? And you who keep watching online. Mm -hmm. What if all of us doing that at the same time? The same, same day. You have nothing else. Amen. Right. And what if you graduated from there? Let's say you start there. And you consistently do that. You can't stay there. Suppose you take advantage of the time you do get dressed and come to church and take this word and start applying it to your life. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you don't start speaking life over your situation, it'll never change. And you'll be wondering, why is God doing it for everybody else but me? Mm -hmm. Right? Because the more you confess it, the more you believe it, the more you confess it, the more it changes who you are and what you do. And you'll start making better decisions in your life. Amen. But your expectation should be through the roof. Yes. You know, we used to, we used to do each other, to, 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 to each other all the time. Like, what are you standing on? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me the problem you got. Tell me what word you're standing on. Amen. Right. Still doing it. What word are you standing on? Mm -hmm. You got a problem. If you need something from God, there ought to be a word that corresponds to it. Mm -hmm. Something you put your faith in that has a supernatural ability to change your situation. Amen. These people were as good as dead, man. God told Ezekiel, let me show you what I can do. Let me show you what I can do. I can turn this around. They're not too far gone. You're not too far gone. Amen. Your situation is not too far gone. Mm -hmm. You can start the process today. Amen. You can start the process today mm -hmm. of restoring, mm -hmm. reviving your situation. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Imagine. Mm -hmm. I had surgery in November. I was supposed to be done with this. But God says, don't forget. Mm -hmm. You need me. Yeah. Don't forget what it's like to go in that bathroom and shut the door. Mm -hmm. You talk to me, just me and you. Don't stop going in there and shutting that door. Isn't that amazing? Amen. I guess I can go and get healed, man, and stay healed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let my healer take me away from the healer. Mm -hmm. Speak light. Yeah. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper being healthy even as your soul prospers. So in other words, it's okay for me to prosper naturally as long as I'm prospering spiritually. If I'm growing spiritually and getting closer to God, I'm supposed that that is supposed to be matched by my external, not the other way around. The closer I get to God, the more I grow in faith in God. Right? Just faith in God. My belief that God is able to do anything but fail. And I continue to, 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 to put him, his word to the test in every situation in my life, then I should see my external start matching my internal. It has no choice because life has to change. Doors that will open, close have to be open. No matter who walk, no matter who like it. But we don't really don't want to put you in that position where you really don't have no choice. Because I got the kind of faith that won't be denied. Amen. And then that kind of faith just starts moving all kinds of things around in your life. Amen. We're gonna come against you. Well, you might come against me, but I I, I would recommend you didn't. Okay. <laughs> and you can't come. We say when I was running, you feel frog and jump. <laughs> Right, you can come. I wouldn't recommend it though. I wouldn't recommend it. Right? Just because I don't fight back don't mean you ain't gonna be in a fight. Amen. See, I don't I don't fight. That's good. No more. No more. <laughs> right? Because I know somebody's fighting for me. Amen. Yes. Yes. So if you come against me, I just trust that he got this. And then as a matter of fact, I should pray for you. Because you got in a battle that you don't really want no time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But see how see how things start changing? Amen. The way you think, the way you talk, the way you act changes as you grow internally. Mm -hmm. We God does not want to be disconnected. I'm done. God does not want to be disconnected from you. He wants to be connected to you. He wants to be close to you. He wants to talk to you and engage with you. He wants you to know that you're loved. He wants you to know that you're redeemed. 
He wants to know he gave up everything for you. And he can do anything for you. Amen. You can't use him. You can't play him. But if you get sincere and for real about him, he's got you. But there's a process. Amen. We live our whole life as a heathen, and then we get saved, and we want God to turn our whole life around. Mm -hmm. I've been coming to church for, for, for four weeks now. <laughs> and you're 27 years old. I just, I just called out 27. You could be 18. You could be 18 years living like a creep. Mm. And you can put God. Shoot, I'm caged. No. We talk about church like we talk like pregnant women talk. You ever ask a woman, woman how far she is? She'd always say weeks. <laughs> Men don't have no clue what that means. I'm 16 weeks. What is that? Tell us in months. <laughs> That's how we do the coming church. I've been coming to church for eight and a half weeks. God ain't did nothing yet. And you found your, you stumbled your way in here. <laughs> you finally surrendered when you was 22. And you want a lotto hit. So you run away again. That's what you want. That's what you want. That's why you don't get it. God knows you're going to run away. As soon as he bless you, you run away. Where the oil in that? As soon as he bless you, you run. Because <laughs> you don't need him no more. That's why you got to go through a process to develop your faith so that you can stand whether God has come or you're waiting for him to come. You can still stand and you're faithful at it. God is restored, but you got to speak life. Amen. Next week, I'm going to show you what happened when somebody said the opposite of what God said, what God did to them. That's how important this is. So I'm just warning you now, anybody who got my ear, and you talk to me at any time, I, I'm, I'm going to have less and less tolerance for that foolish talk. Amen. I'm telling you now, whoever you are, you we can't talk, but you can't, I can't, I can't, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot be a party to your suicide mission. You're killing your own finances. I won't be a party to that. Because I don't want God asking me well, or saying to me, you heard them killing their own self and you didn't do nothing to stop them. I'm going to say, Lord, I preached the word to them. That's, that's, that's it. You start talking, get off the phone so I don't have to be accountable. I didn't hear it. I don't know. All right. I better not be the only one. Amen. Amen. You better be saying, hey, look, what does the Bible say? If neither one of us know, let's call somebody who do know. Amen. So we can stop hurting ourselves. Mm -hmm. Stop shooting ourselves in the foot. That's good. Won't God do something? We keep saying God ain't gonna do. That's so good. But that's not gonna work. Okay? Amen. I'm healed. Amen. Amen. Right? You ought to speak life over your own situation. You're gonna stand on your feet. Speak life over your own situation. Whatever it is, your health, your finances, your family, whatever it is, speak life to it. Speak life to it. Amen. That was my son. I'm <laughs> but that was a, it was a good overwhelm. But she said they didn't know what you were saying. <laughs> she actually said she thought they thought I was talking about her. That I was saying she overwhelmed me. That's why they moved. <laughs> Those are words, not mine. <laughs> All right. Amen. All right. Lift your hands.